All right, guys, so a few weeks ago, a couple months ago now, about 60 days ago, we made this mushroom food plot and we're checking the health of it now to see if it's ready to go. So what we're gonna do is gonna pull back the top layer of sawdust and we can already see beautiful white mycelium vigorously growing here. I'm just gonna push my hand down, get a nice chunk of it. So the white threads we see are like a subway system. They're not threads at all, they're actually hollow tubes. And so it's shuttling nutrients in a big complex maze and then it's breaking down this lignin and cellulose and redistributing the trace elements into the landscape in exchange for sugars for plants. And then of course the byproduct is mushrooms. Beautiful soil in the end too, of course. So this one is doing great. And I can kind of feel how hard and spongy it is, right? So I know that this one probably gonna be ready this year for hunting season. And it's gonna to continue to produce mushrooms for the next three to five years without me adding new materials. If I every other year or every year decide to add new sawdust to this, I can keep it going for many, many years to come without having to add more spawn. I can also make it larger. And that's what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna expand this. We're gonna add another 10 feet by five feet onto the end of it. So to get this mycelium onto this, we're gonna to have to do some work. First, we're gonna need some basic stuff. A tape measure, a rake, a lawnmower, optionally, some straw, and some wood chips, and that's it. It's gonna take us about 20 minutes to make another five by 10 or 50 square feet for one bag of spawn right here. And it should happen fast enough that we'll see results from it still this hunting season. So before we put the mycelium down, we need to expose the bare earth. We hit it with the mower to get rid of the unwanted vegetation, but we actually need soil contact to this mycelium for it to work right. And what it will do is work with the bacteria and native fungi in the mycorrhizae that are already present here to shuttle all the nutrients that it needs. And it will improve the browse quality of the surrounding vegetation in the process. In this bare earth, there's a whole host of bacterial life and native mycorrhizal fungi that already colonize this ground that are gonna work with this to give it everything that it needs. And it's gonna change everything that it produces from breaking down this material for what it needs. We've got to soak our straw. If we start with wet ingredients when we make a mushroom food plot, we'll have great success. We're gonna put this inside this tank for 12 to 24 hours to soak. And then you're going to drain it. Or if you can't drain it, or you don't want to because you want to do another one, take half of it at a time and put it inside a wheelbarrow. So drain a little water out of this so it's easier to move. All right, so we're gonna dump about half the straw on the ground. We're gonna take our bag of spawn. We're gonna do the first step, which is break it up until we get it back to sawdust, because that's what it is, just sawdust with mycelium growing on it. And once we've got it back up into, let's say ping pong ball sizes or smaller, and in particular, nice fluffy sawdust like stuff, we're gonna create three layers, 25% of the bag, 25%, then the remaining half. We're gonna take approximately 25% of this beautiful spawn, and we're just gonna crumble the first layer down on the ground, just like this across the whole thing. Now that we've got our first level of spawn down, we're gonna drop half of our straw bale that we soaked over the ground. So we're gonna break up this whole first half of the bale and then put another level of spawn down. Putting a small level out, the next time we spread after the rest of the straw is used, we're gonna use everything left in the bag. Just like before, we're gonna add another level of straw. All right, now that we've got the rest of our straw down, it's time to come in with the last of our mycelium. A quick little tamp with the back side of our rake to make sure that we knock all the air pockets out of this and get all that straw laying down flat. We're just gonna cover it with three to six inches of sawdust. But there are a few rules. Number one, no pine, no cedar, no spruce, fir, stuff like that. And if there is some, we wanna keep it to about 
10%, a quarter at the very top end, but let's keep it under 10. There's a reason we build with those woods, and that's because they're rot resistant. Mushrooms are in fact rot. So we wanna put food out for the mushrooms that they can eat. Avoid giant pieces of wood chips, if at all possible, and avoid very fine sawdust because it tends to cake and repel water. All that being said, soft hardwoods like maple, red maple, sugar maple, popple, aspens, those are the very best, but almost every hardwood is gonna work just fine. What we wanna do is one bag of spawn, one bale of straw, and one yard of wood chips. A level truckload is two yards of wood chips. So we're gonna unload half this truck and call it good. That's it guys, three to five years of deer food in a half hour. Costs less than $80. Yeah, I new wood chips every few years, three to five years, two years, whatever I'm into. Keep this going or choose to let it rot down. I'm still gonna see mushrooms for a long time either way. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching everybody. everybody.